Welcome back to Movement Monday, guys. Uh, we are going to start looking at some kipping positions uh, as well as some ways that we can practice kipping pull-ups or the butterfly position of a kipping pull-up uh, in some ways that's going to allow you to really focus on your form versus focusing on the height or truly kind of the completion of the pull-up of getting your chin or your chest to the bar. Uh, for those of you who follow the premium account, uh, you're going to see this exact complex show up in your work tomorrow. Um, and those of you who don't, you'll be able to give this a shot. Or if you want to give a shot looking at the premium, um, head over to Wadfollow and, uh, and give it a peek. So these are two different videos. They're two different sets. But I've tried to cue these up as close as possible just so we can kind of work back and forth. Uh, with these as well as best we can. So what we're going to see here though, um, again, always when you hop up on a bar is establish that hollow position. This is kind of a dynamic start. I kind of I tried to cue it up just right. But you can see here now, um, the first part of this was just five easy hollow arch kips. Whenever you're working hollow arch kips, focus only on keeping your eyes forward, keeping your lats engaged, and trying to keep that connection from bar all the way to the points of your toes. Again, you can see here we've got a nice arch position as we move back through here now too. We're going to see reaching back to a good arch position. You're going to be able to see that too through here um, kind of in that from that from that posterior view as well. So we have five of these just as a nice tempo and this is a chance for you just to truly focus on the way that you move uh, really hammering home those positions because again what we talked about in that blog post the other day this being the off season uh, tightening up and making these basic positions of gymnastics and of all of the things that we're doing is our primary goal right now. So make sure you are being truly focused on that. So we see a nice tempo there. What we see here next is after this fifth one, what I call these next ones, and you've probably seen these kind of floating around. We've programmed these in the past, but we call these as like kipping small circles. What these are going to be is that we are trying to replicate the motion of a, of a kipping butterfly pull-up but with a small circle, I'm not concerned in any way, shape, or form the height of your chin or the how your body gets. What I really want you to focus on is, again, maintaining those positions of the hollow and arch kip and using that kip to take most of the pressure of the pull-up off of your body. The true secret and the reason why kipping pull-ups or butterfly pull-ups are so much faster than our normal kipping variety is because the kip is going to be doing 80 to 90% of the work up. The idea is that the kip is going to be doing most of the work up through and that your active portion of the motion now is going to revert now to the recycle or putting yourself back in this position. But the thing is, is that the maintenance of those hollow and arch positions that we're going to be foundationally using do not change. So we went back through again. So here's our before, our nice hollow arch kips, but now we're going to go to our small circle. So we reach back to arch. You can see here again, arch and arch. We kip through to hollow. And if we paused it right here, we, this would look the exact same as our normal kips as, they, as we saw in that previous cycle before. But what we see here now is that instead of me kind of holding on tight and just feeling the motion of the kip is that whenever I snap from hollow to arch, I'm getting momentum up. All right, I'm getting momentum up in this position. And the idea is, is that as I increase the, the amount of power and the amount of aggression that I have in that kip, I'm going to be able to get higher and higher. And we're going to see that in the transferability into higher order movements of chest to bar, bar muscle up, so on and so forth. But that's what's getting me up. The kip is getting me up. And you can see here, right now, I'm not focused. I have no concern if my chin's over the bar. I don't care anything or what's happening in the sense of my finish. But what I'm focusing on now is that as soon as I feel that weightlessness of that momentum, is that I'm trying to put myself in the best position to pull myself now back into the hollow position. Whenever we had our nice tempo kips back here before, Right, we just hit a arch to hollow and we went right back to the next one. But now, whenever I'm going here through, is that whenever I reach the top of this kip, right, the ride of the wave of momentum through my kip, once I reach the height here, instead of me now pushing away back to my hollow arch tempo, is that I'm going to start pulling myself. And you're going to see here, and this is one of the big reasons why I want to uh, show you this from this posterior review, is that you can kind of, let's go back just a little bit, is that whenever you can see the kip, my back really hasn't fired yet. Okay, my back it really isn't turned on yet, and I'm already getting momentum up. And that's why I want to cue this up side by side. So as I come up and through, what you're going to see here is as I reach the peak of my kip, again, the momentum that I've gained from free energy transferring from my hips to the bar, is that my back is turning on big time. Okay, and the reason why is because what's happening here is that I'm using my back, I'm using my mid to upper, my T-spine back, to pull myself through now to an arch position. Look at this, okay? 
again, you can even see here that arch position. You can see that the activity in my in my upper and mid back as I hit to this bottom position. So you can see here, I have pulled myself from the top of that position, and I have now recycled cycled myself down to the bottom right here. And again, if I took a snapshot of this back to my tempo kips that I had before, I have recycled myself now back from that arch to hollow kip to go directly next into my in my into the successive reps. So when we see this all put together, here I'll play this for y'all. What we see here is you can see here there's a tempo to it. And the tempo is not driven. I'm not forcing the tempo. I'm riding the wave of momentum that I'm creating through my kip. And the active portion of the butterfly is putting me in position to recycle this for multiple, multiple reps. And this is even going to apply now. What we see in the complex that you guys are going to see for the premium users tomorrow is it's going to be five hollow, hollow arch tempos kips only, five small circle kips where we're focusing on this butterfly positioning um, and staying active through the whole body. But notice here too, one thing I want to point out is that through those small circles, I have not, I am not losing my positions, right? Just because I've now moved into a butterfly position doesn't let me, doesn't allow me to turn into the, the flying S-shaped flying squirrel or whatever you want to see it. My knees aren't bent up back behind my head, right? My back isn't losing connection. My shoulder blades aren't bottoming out. I'm just having a nice, easy tempo. Again, using and hammering home those tight, aggressive positions that we've gone over and over again. What we're going to see is that as this ramps up now, we're then going to go directly into some true pull-ups. And if you notice here now is that I'm not changing the way my, I move by any means. The only thing I'm changing, if you'll notice here, is that the kip itself might get a hair longer and it's going to get a lot more aggressive. So as I move into this next position, look, you can see how that starts to change. So let's go back to, as I transition from the from the small circles to the, so let's go here. So we're going to see some small circles, small circles, small circle. Now we're going to pull up. As soon as I did that transition, let's try to find that right there. Back a little bit more. Sorry, guys. So as I go through here, here's the last small circle, and I believe, and you can see here that next one, as I reach back now for this next one, I'm pulling myself even harder and I snap even harder up and through. I'm gonna play this for you guys from front to back real quick just so you can kind of see us all put together. Uh, and I want you to, again, whenever we have this program tomorrow, focus, focus, focus on your positions and focus on staying active as you pull yourself in those small circles. And as we go through those small circles, we're not changing that in, in sense of a pull up, we're just changing the aggressiveness of our kick. So here we go, small circles. And now we're going to go to the pull-up. Again, look at the tension through the backs. Look at the positions that we're maintaining the whole time. Guys, it's not rocket science. And it's not its not that hard in the sense of it's hard to learn the positions initially. But once you have these positions down and you've built the strength to hold these, it becomes about practice, right? And we've talked about this over and over again. Is Right now, in the world of competitive exercising, is that the people who win are the people who move with the most efficiency. And this is something that you can practice more than what we program it. If you need to improve your pull-ups, this is something that you can work on daily if you need to. These small circles aren't something that are going to blow you out by doing a max rep set, but this is something that you can practice um, with a lot of purpose and make yourself better at these really, really quickly. So, guys, feel free to leave some comments. Um, let me know what you think, um, and I'd love to hear what you guys want to see me address here in the next few weeks as well, too. Good luck.